Welcome to another Music Theory instructional video. In this screencast, we're going to learn about how to find the prime form of a pitch class set. Before you start, you may wish to review pitch class integer notation and the clock face, normal order of pitch class sets, transposition of pitch class sets, and inversion of pitch class sets. What is prime form? Prime form is a representation of a collection of pitch class sets related by transposition and or inversion. This collection of pitch class sets is called a set class. Prime form is useful for quickly identifying whether two pitch class sets are related by transposition or inversion. Let's listen to an example from Anton Webern's Opus 5, number 3. Intuitively, we may wish to know more about how Webern constructed the three note chords present throughout this excerpt. Likewise, it might be interesting to analyze these larger six note gestures. Let's examine the first two trichords. The first trichord consists of B, D, and E flat, which we represent with the integers 11, 2, and 3. The second chord consists of G, B flat, and B, which we represent with the integers 7, 10, and 11. You may notice that the clock face diagrams look similar. The chords are related by transposition. If we transpose the first set by 8 semitones, we get the second set. Prime form can help us quickly see that two sets are related by transposition or inversion. After plotting your pitch classes on the clock face, the first step to figuring out prime form is to find all of the intervals in the set and identify the largest interval. This is the wraparound interval. Draw a line that identifies this wraparound interval. The interval between 11 and 2 is 3 semitones. The interval between 2 and 3 is 1 semitone. The, and the interval between 3 and 11 is 8 semitones. This is the largest interval in the trichord, our wraparound interval. The next step, reading clockwise, start on 0 and build a pitch class set using the intervals in the given set. So starting on 0 and reading the intervals clockwise results in 0, 0 plus 3 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, and all together we have 0, 3, and 4. Next, reading counterclockwise, start on 0 and build a pitch class set using the intervals in the given set. Taking the same succession of intervals and reading counterclockwise, starting on 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 3 is 4, and all together we have 0, 1, 4. Last, we're going to choose the set that reads the smallest intervals first. Since the interval between 0 and 1 is smaller than the interval between 0 and 3, we choose 0, 1, 4 as our prime form. Here is a summary of all of the steps for finding prime form. Let's take a look at the next of Webern's trichords. The first step is to look at all of those successive intervals in the set. 7 to, seven, uh, seven to 10 is 3, 10 to 11 is 1, and 11 to 7 is 8. This is the wraparound interval. As you can see, a counterclockwise reading will yield the smallest intervals first. Since this is so obvious, we can just combine steps 2 and 3 and jump to this reading. Starting on 0 and reading the intervals counterclockwise, we get 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 3 is 4, so altogether 0, 1, 4. This is the same set class as the first trichord. 
As we know, the trichords are related by transposition. Because of this, they have the same prime form. Let's take a look at the next two trichords that Webern uses in his excerpt. I've gone ahead and plotted the pitch classes from these chords onto the clock face. You may notice that the patterns look quite similar. In fact, they're mirror images of each other, with the 0-6 axis operating as the mirror. This means that the chords are related by inversion. So, if we reflect the first set across the 0-6 axis, 0 reflects to 0, 9 reflects to 3, and 8 reflects to 4. Thus, these two sets are related by T0i. Let's calculate the prime form of these two sets. The first one, 8, 9, 0, includes intervals of 1, 3, and 8 semitones. Clearly, the 8 semitone gap between 0 and 8 is the wraparound interval. As you can see, reading the interval succession clockwise will yield the smallest intervals first. Starting on 0, we once again have a prime form of 0, 1, 4. This means that this chord is related to the two that we previously analyzed. If we plot the last trichord onto the clock face, we get 0, 3, and 4. This pattern looks familiar. The successive intervals in this trichord are 3, 1, and 8. And starting on 0, reading counterclockwise, we get 0, 1, and 4 again. Webern was quite economical when choosing his pitch class sets. For the last example, let's take a closer look at the two six-note gestures at the end of the excerpt. The first chord, D, F, E, C, F sharp, B flat, is plotted onto the clock face. The largest interval exists between pitch classes 6 and 10. This is our wraparound interval. The intervals between the notes in the chord are 2, 2, 1, excuse me, 2, 2, 2, 1, and 1. As you can see, we must read the interval succession counterclockwise to figure out the prime form. Starting on 0, we have 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6, and 6 plus 2 is 8. Altogether, we have 0, 1, 2, 4, 6, and 8. Let's take a look at the next uh, six note gesture. The second chord, A, C, B, G, C sharp, and F, is plotted onto the clock face. The largest interval exists between pitch classes 1 and 5. This is our wraparound interval. The intervals between the notes in the chord are 2, 2, 2, 1, and 1. As you can see, we must read the interval succession counterclockwise to figure out prime form. Starting on 0, we have 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6, and 6 plus 2 is 8. Altogether, we have 0, 1, 2, 4, 6, 8. Since this and the previous hexachord share the same prime form, we know that they must be related by either transposition, inversion, or both. As you can see when we compare both sets on the clock face, the viola part is a 7 semitone transposition of the first violin part. Because the sets are related by transposition, they have the same prime form. Finding prime form is a quick and easy way to figure out whether two pitch class sets are related by transposition or inversion. It allows us to show connections between chords and other musical gestures, which can be very useful when analyzing non-tonal music. I hope you enjoyed this screencast.